In this session we're going to talk about the ADDI model which is used in the development of training programs and in particular we're going to talk about the development stage of the ADDI program. Uh, the ADDI schema is divided into five parts and we're dealing here with the, the third part. So ADDI stands for the analysis design, development, implementation and evaluation. And training programs, it's argued, should follow these five steps. So it's important that the training program is based on analysis. Why does it exist and why is it there? Is it adequately designed? Is it properly designed? And the development and then the implementation and evaluation. And there is a video on each one of these um, parts. So in this session we're going to talk about the development part. Now the development stage in the training program uh, is producing a bank of material. It's, the idea here is developing the program. It's been designed. That was the second part. This is the third part. So it's already been designed. Now it's a question of development acquiring the resources and putting together the program in a way which is consistent with the design and which will meet the objectives of the program. So training programs happen for a reason and having been designed to uh, achieve the outcomes that are desired they, they must now be des uh, developed. So the development stage is looking at the resources that's going to be used and how the resources are going to be put together and how the program is going to be developed overall. So the nature of development, well the development phase is dependent on analysis and design. So it must come at this level, it must be part three. The analysis stage is designing the objectives and thinking about the objectives of the course. This may be a manager in the business who wants his or her workers to have a certain set of skills or uh, it may be some new piece of software in the account section of the business or marketing may have come across some new ideas about marketing in, in certain ways. So whatever it is there must be some analysis of what is required and some objectives must be worked out at that stage. Then we have the the design stage where uh, looking at the design of the program and how the program can be uh, designed to meet those objectives and now we're looking at what materials and uh, what can be brought together to fit in with the design stage, the previous stage, and which will also now meet the objectives of the, the program itself. So this phase is involved with building the course content. The, the whole concept of this phase is to trial the theories developed in the design stage and put them into practice. So the idea here is to look at the design stage and look at the objectives of the the whole course and build content, build learning methods, build learning aids which will facilitate the learning on the course. So it's developing the course itself, developing the practical delivery of the course. Material is extracted from the schemes of work. The schemes of work will be set out in the design stage in the in the document, the, in the, the the course document which was developed in the design stage. So the schemes of work will indicate what is required and this material will be extracted. Uh, it's important that the trainers go to the, uh, to the document, understand what is required and look at the the schemes of work that are set out in the document and then try to get learning tools that match 
and which, which will facilitate what is required in that learning document. The learning tools could be multimedia or it could be uh, an expert in the area who, who wants to uh, perhaps uh, be involved or, or could be invited to be involved uh, with the programme and who will give expert opinion to uh, the, the attendees, to the people being trained. It could be that or it could be uh, a very uh, well skilled and articulate presenter who perhaps is brought in for the day to present the material. Or it could be computer programs, it could be e-learning facilities. So it depends. The point is that the schemes of work are set out in the document and it's important in this stage, in the development stage, to match what is required in the schemes of work with material which will be used in practice in the training program. Now the development of resources. Well, developing appropriate resources for trainees is largely based on the, the type of delivery method. So for example, it may be that the trainees require textbooks or they require um, PDFs or the required training manuals or it depends. They, they may require excerpts from training manuals and a chapter from a textbook. Uh, it depends. Uh, so it's important that the, the trainers look at the schemes of work set out in the, in the document which is developed in the, the design stage and try to match the requirements of that with documents and learning materials which will get across the requirements, the, the learning requirements as set out in the document. So it's just simply putting together materials, learning materials, which will achieve the objectives which are set out in the, in the learning document, in the, the document developed in the design stage. There are all sorts of materials that could be used, multimedia, video, virtual learning environments, VLEs. Well, we don't really learn from VLEs. VLEs are like packages that hold resources. But they're good because um, attendees may go back to the computer and log on to a VLE, a virtual learning environment, and find in the learning environment uh, links to various learning resources and various uh, pieces of material that are relevant in certain situations. It's a good way of organizing learning material. Um, there are all sorts of VLEs uh, available. The most popular I suppose is Moodle uh, which we use. Uh, it's uh, available throughout the world. But there are others, Blackboard and others that are available. Um, so it, it, the point is that the, the trainees should have access to learning material and the learning material is focused in on the outcomes specified in the design document, in the course document. So having read or looked at this material, having studied the material, having attended the sessions, having participated in discussion groups and so on, the, the trainee is now uh, skilled in that particular task or has knowledge of that particular uh, requirement. So it's just simply collecting the materials. It could also be face-to-face or hands-on training. Um, it doesn't have to be uh, abstract material in the form of words or diagrams or computer algorithms or whatever. It could be face-to-face -face talking, it could be group discussions, or it could be uh, practical training, looking at a particular component or a particular part of a machine and getting the skills necessary to fix it or to uh, re-engineer it or to modify it in some way. 
So the conclusion, well, the development uh, phase is a process of producing relevant learning material resources for trainees. These resources must challenge the learners and facilitate their learning. So it's, it's getting good course material. Um, good PowerPoint slides, good presenter, perhaps uh, online material, face-to-face, -face, all, the, all the, the ideas we've just spoken about in the last couple of slides. It's getting that is the, the practical development of the course. And it brings theory into practice. It looks at what the document, the course document, wants to achieve and it gets the material that it's appropriate and efficient to bring about the requirements of the course. So it, it meets the objectives that are set out and it does it in an efficient manner with the most appropriate material. Um, so the resources, as I said, must be appropriate in order to achieve learning outcomes and these learning outcomes are specified in the schemes of work in the course document which is develop developed in the previous phase of the ADDIE model in the design phase. So in this session, quite a short session, we just simply looked at the development of the learning material, the different types of learning material and making sure that the learning material is specific to the schemes of work set out in the, le in the learning document as developed in the design stage. And don't forget, th the design stage itself is based on the analysis, which was the first stage. And the analysis is setting out the learning outcomes that were desired. It could be, as I said earlier, a manager who wish wishes his or her staff to have certain skills or knowledge of certain aspects of work that could be a learning outcome. So it starts from there into the design phase, how can this be achieved and now we're down to what materials do we need to do this efficiently and effectively, developing the learning materials. And that really concludes this short class, so I'm going to leave it at that and say thank you for learning, thank you for watching, sorry, thank you for watching.